why good morning you're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha television it is the perfect show to kick start your day bringing you the top national international sports and business news i'm ashwarya kapoor and here are this morning's headlines prime minister narendra modi to hold talks with the nepalese counterpart uh, sher bahadur dueba both leaders to discuss issues of troubling bilateral ties Prime Minister asks uh, Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu to continue after he offers to resign following back-to-back -back railway accidents. Ashwini Lohani named new Railway Board Chairman. Senior Army Commanders of India and Pakistan hold a flag meet at Line of Control in Jammu and Kashmir. Both sides agree on importance to exercise restraint. At least 41 people killed in air strikes at a small hotel in Yemen's capital Sana. This after Saudi-led coalition steps up air strikes against the Houthi rebels and allies. And the Sainal Nehwal, Kidambi Shrikanth and Pisai Praneeth enter pre-quarterfinals in singles event of the World Badminton Championships in Glasgow. Top story this morning Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Nepal Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dweba will hold talks today in the national capital now both the leaders are expected to resolve some of the issues troubling bilateral relations besides reviewing the entire relationship the effort will also be to cement trade and economic ties in face of challenges from China here are the details An unscheduled meeting between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Nepalese counterpart Sher Bahadur Dweba at the former's residence. This is Dweba's first trip abroad since assuming office in June this year. Prime Minister Narendra Modi tweeting he looks forward to extensive talks today. The two prime ministers will review the entire gamut of bilateral ties and discuss ways to further deepen relationship in a range of areas including trade and investment. Later on Wednesday, Deoba attended a business meet organized by the ASOCHAM. India has said that if Nepal approves, it would like to lay a transnational natural gas pipeline. Prime Minister Deoba invited in in companies to open their units in Nepal. October तक अगर आप किस समय रहे, आपको सुविधा हो, तो हम दोनों देशों की सीमा में भारत और नेपाल की पहला प्रोडक्ट पाइपलाइन की न्यू रखेंगे और समय के हिसाब से उसको हम पूरा करेंगे जो पाइपलाइन आने वाले कई सालों तक दो मिलियन मेट्रिक टन कैपेसिटी को पाइपलाइन आने वाले कई दशकों तक नेपाल की आवश्यकताओं को पूरा करेगी वी आर रेडी टू गैदर पेस एंड वी वार्मली इनवाइट यू टू एंगेज विथ अस वी वेलकम यू टू डू बिजनेस इन नेपाल इन्वेस्ट देयर क्रिएट जॉब एंड Not of the new climate of innovation and entrepreneurship. I call upon both our business community to work together. This is the only way to advance our goal: greater prosperity by building on the strong social ties and heritage that we share. Deoba also met the Nepalese community in Delhi and assured them of better days between the two countries. Deoba's visit comes at a time when both countries despite having a unique relationship are faced with the need to resolve issues related to mutual confidence. The army is concerned our army chief is honorary army chief of India and your army chief is honorary army chief of Nepal. This kind of relationship we are having. I think it is very unique. Also uh for both the countries um, citizens uh, level we are having this equal national treatment for example i can um, uh, being a nepali having nepali passport uh, or nepali citizenship i can stay in india the nepalese prime minister arrived in delhi on wednesday with his wife arzu deoba and a high level delegation of ministers and top bureaucrats external affairs minister sushma swaraj received him at the airport Today he will meet President Ramnath Govind, Vice President M Venkaiya Naidu and leaders of various political parties. During his stay, Deoba will also visit Hyderabad and Gaya. India Nepal relationship has to be eased and it will require great efforts from both the governments. And if it is done, 
This will be the biggest achievement of this visit. Akhilesh Soman for Raj Sawar Television with camera person Dusmanta in Delhi. On to some other news, Home Minister Rajnath Singh will attend a meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization or the SCO on disaster prevention and relief in Kyrgyz Republic today. The meeting aims to focus on prevention and elimination of emergency situations. During the visit, the Home Minister is likely to hold a bilateral meetings with the ministers of some of the SCO member states as well. The Indian delegation includes the senior officers from the Home Ministry, the National Disaster Management Authority, as well as the External Affairs Ministry. India has got the full membership of SCO this year itself. On to the other top stories. Senior Army commanders of India and Pakistan on Wednesday held a flag meeting on the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir. The battalion commander level officers meeting was held at Chakandabag in Poonch district. At the meeting, the Indian side highlighted abetment and support of the Pakistani army to the cross-border terrorism, sniping actions on the line of control and deliberate targeting of civilian areas during ceasefire violations. And both the sides mutually agreed to the importance of exercising restraint on the line of control and keeping the channels of communication open between local commanders. Now, all this, remember, coming in the backdrop of 2017 being seen a sharp increase in the ceasefire violations by Pakistan. Till 1st of August this year, there were 285 such violations by the Pakistani army. Now, the government has decided to set up an alternative mechanism to oversee the proposals for consolidation of public banks. Uh, the cabinet also approved a proposal for setting up of a commission to examine the subcategorization of the other backward classes. Here are all the details. The union cabinet chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave its in-principle approval for the merger of state-owned banks. With this, the government seeks to consolidate 21 state-owned banks in the country. The proposal to merge will come from respective PSU bank boards and the consolidation plans will be examined by a panel of ministers to be picked up by the Prime Minister himself. The consolidation plan follows a successful integration of State Bank of India with its five associate banks and the Bharatiya Mahila Bank. The object is to create strong banks and uh, our experience of consolidation has been positive so far. Uh, it adds uh, commercial strength, it uh, 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 prevents uh, multiplicity of resources being spent in the same area. The cabinet also approved a proposal for setting up a commission under Article 340 of the Constitution to examine the issue of subcategorization of the other backward classes. The commission shall submit its report within 12 weeks from the date of appointment of the chairperson of the commission. 1992 the cabinet also approved the renaming of the new central sector scheme Sampada. Scheme for Agro-Marine Processing and Development of Agro-Processing Clusters as Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana for the period of 2016-20. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. And the Finance Ministry on Wednesday formally announced the launch of the new 200 rupee note. The printing process of the new currency is almost over and the Reserve Bank of India is likely to circulate them by next month. Here is a report. The Reserve Bank of India is set to introduce 200 rupee currency notes for the first time in history. The Finance Ministry specified the new 200 rupee currency notes in a Gazette notification on Wednesday. These notes are expected to help bridge the gap between 100 and 500 rupee currency notes. This is the whole process of when it will be hidden, it will be done by the RBI. And that's why it will be done by the RBI. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Wednesday put at rest rumours of 2,000 rupee currency notes being phased out, saying that the government has no plan to do so. This is the fourth new note to be announced since November when Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced an overnight ban on 1,000 and 500 rupee currency notes. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. 
And now an update on the rail accidents in Uttar Pradesh. And uh, Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu offered to resign after back-to-back -back train derailments in Uttar Pradesh. He met uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday and offered to quit. The Prime Minister has, uh, however, asked him to continue. Remember, 100 people were injured after the Delhi-bound uh, Kefiath Express derailed in Auraria. Rescue operations following the incident ended. Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu offering to quit on Wednesday. His offer coming on a day of the second train accident in five days in Uttar Pradesh. The Railway Minister in a series of tweets saying he met the Prime Minister and took full moral responsibility for the accidents. Suresh Prabhu saying he was extremely pained by the two derailments in Uttar Pradesh. He also added that in less than three years, he has devoted his blood and sweat for the betterment of the railways and has tried to overcome decades of neglect. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, however, has asked Prabhu to continue. The fallout of the accident of the Kaifiat Express on Wednesday in Oraya in Uttar Pradesh was that the railway board chairman A.K. Mittal resigned, Air India Chief Ashwani Lohani, a railway engineer, being named as his successor. Well, accountability is a good system in government. The, no, the Prime Minister will take a decision on whatever request the railway minister has made. The Congress, however, saying the railway minister has failed and demanded his resignation. एक बात सच्चाई की सामने है कि रेल हादसे अब भारतीय रेल का पर्यायवाची बन गए हैं और उसका कारण है ना राजनीतिक जवाबदेही है और ना प्रशासनिक सक्षमता दोनों में बुरी तरह से रेल मंत्री और रेल मंत्रालय ओंधे मुंह गिरे हैं उन्हें उनका इस्तीफा मंजूर हो या उन्हें पदमुक्त किया जाए और प्रधानमंत्री ये बताएं कि रेल सुरक्षा को लेकर वो क्या कदम उठाएंगे Ten coaches of the Kefiath Express train derailed in UP's Oraya district after crashing into a dumper which strayed onto the tracks. Police said about 100 passengers were wounded. Corridor pe mitti ka kam aise chal raha hai, lekin raat ke do baje, dhai baje generally corridor pe koi mitti ka kam hota nahi hai. Aur abhi tak hamari jankari ke unsar se ye DFC ka koi link nahi hai iske saath hai. Bilkul ye jo hamara dumper driver hai, ab bataiye hamari train chal rahi hai, bagal mein fencing hai, usko toh ke dumper driver agar aaja hai raat mein, beech raat mein hai, to uski puri lapar hai ye. Aur dumper driver ke malik aur driver zuno ke bilaf karvai hogi. The accident comes five days after 13 coaches of the Kalinga Utkal Express derailed in Khatoli in Uttar Pradesh on August 19, killing 22 people and injuring 156. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And the Supreme Court will deliver its much-awaited verdict on whether right to privacy of citizens is a fundamental right under the Constitution. The judgment will be delivered by a nine-judge Constitution bench led by the Chief Justice of India, J.S. Kher. Today, the court member had reserved its verdict on 3rd of August after marathon hearings. A bunch of petitions were filed in the Apex Court in 2015, challenging Aadhaar as a breach of privacy. Now, the Constitution bench, which was uh, to deal with the plea challenging the validity of the Aadhaar scheme and the right to privacy attached to it, was faced uh, with the two past verdicts, which were delivered in 1950 and 1962 by larger benches, holding that the privacy right was not a fundamental right. The centre has submitted in court uh, that a right to privacy could be a fundamental right, but it could not be absolute. And on to details on uh, the flood situation across various states in the country and the toll in Bihar floods rose to 367 with 26 more deaths reported on Wednesday. 1.58 crore people are affected in 19 districts of the state. Now, 696 relief camps have been set up. Araria is uh, the worst hit uh, district with 80 deaths reported. Now, Chief Minister Nidish Kumar visited the flood hit areas and has uh, also handed over a check of 4 lakh rupees each to the next of a kin of deceased. Also, the death toll in the UP floods stands at 82 now. 24 districts are inundated. More than 22 lakh people are affected in the state. Army choppers, NTRF and PAC personnel continue relief and rescue operations. As for the Central Waters Commission, many rivers are flowing above the danger mark. Meanwhile, the situation in Assam has improved considerably. Nearly 7 lakh people across 11 districts are affected. Morigaon reported one more death on Wednesday. Now, the third wave of flood has so far claimed 71 lives. 
The toll this year has gone up to 155. The authorities are running 146 relief camps and distribution centers in, ele in eight districts of the state. Meanwhile, in West Bengal, the situation in the six uh, flood hit areas has also improved. No fresh deaths have been reported. The flood toll has reached 152. Out of nearly 800 relief camps opened around uh, 500 operating, wherein uh, close to 4 lakh people have taken shelter. And in breakfast news, we'll take a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay with us. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Thanks for staying with us. Now an update on the swine flu situation. And India has recorded 1,094 swine flu-related deaths in 2017, with a maximum 342 casualties being reported in August itself. The data was released on Wednesday by the Union Health Ministry. Now the highest number of deaths was recorded in Maharashtra at 437, followed by Gujarat with 269, Kerala at 73, and Rajasthan at 69. India has so far recorded 22,186 cases so with Maharashtra again leading with maximum 4,245 cases followed by Goa with 3,029 and Tamil Nadu with 2,994 cases. The national capital so far has recorded 1,719 H1N1 infections and five deaths. Meanwhile, the Delhi BJP has requested it uh, Lieutenant Governor Anil Bejal to declare a medical emergency in view of the growing number of swine flu cases in the city. ज़्यादा तर वही थे जो जिनकी immunity compromised थी। तो स्वस्थ आदमी जिसको swine flu होता है उसको कोई समस्या नहीं होती। इस तरह के complication तो जिनको renal failure है या जो immunosuppressant drugs पे हैं, cancer therapy पे हैं। किसी कारण से उनकी बीमारी से लड़ने की प्रतिरोध क्षमता जो है कम है वो इस तरह के सीवियर कॉम्प्लिकेशन उनको होते हैं साधारणतः किसी को इस तरह से घबराने की जरूरत नहीं है जो बीमारी ज्यादा महाराष्ट्र गुजरात में है गुजरात में काफी संख्या में लोगों की मृत्यु हुई है महाराष्ट्र में भी काफी फैला हुआ है इन्फेक्शन और मध्य प्रदेश में बहुत सीमित है ये and on to political situation in Tamil Nadu, the six-month-old E. Palani Swami government continues to face uncertainty as AIA DMK Deputy General Secretary TTV Dhanakaran on Wednesday removed a revenue minister and several others from the party. On Tuesday, 18 AIA DMK MLAs withdrew their support of the chief minister over the merger. Meanwhile, the Congress has also joined the DMK in demanding a flow test in view of the rebellion in the AIA DMK. The crisis within the ruling AIADMK remains unresolved in Tamil Nadu. AIADMK supporters on Wednesday held protests at the Windflower Resort in Puducherry, where 18 party MLAs who are opposing Chief Minister E. Palaniswamy are staying. The protesters allege that the MLAs are being forcibly detained by AIADMK Deputy General Secretary TTV Dinakaran. These MLAs had on Tuesday told Governor Vidya Sagar Rao that they didn't support Palaniswamy as Chief Minister. So what did that day? to Honorable Chief Minister at a party to become a Chief Minister. But when they want to change in the government, why can't they call us? That is our question. And why they want to remove us? That is also another question. Six months back it was Kuvatur, now it is Pondicherry. So there is not much difference. They are afraid. That means that they don't have confidence in their own people. They have to keep them safely. As the Lord President, myself and my floor leader, Congress floor leader, Mr. Ramasamy Hall, we have requested the governor, His Excellency, to convene the assembly and tell the chief minister to prove his majority in the floor of the house. In the 234-member assembly, the AIADMK has 134 members. Dinakaran's faction claims the support of 18 MLAs, reducing the strength of the Palaniswami government to 116. 
too short of the 118 members required for majority. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And now an update on uh, what is happening uh, in Darjeeling. The Gorkha Land Movement Coordination Committee or the GMCC will convene a meeting on Friday to decide whether to attend the 29th of August dialogue. Now this dialogue has been proposed by the West Bengal government following GNLF's letter requesting the state for a discussion on the ongoing unrest in the hills. The Gorkha Jan Mukti Morcha held a meeting on Wednesday to discuss the matter. Several GGM leaders also expressed displeasure pleasure over the GNLF unilaterally writing to the state government. The GMCC is uh, the combination of 30 party hills. Meanwhile, uh, the GGM uh, took out rallies in various parts of the hills demanding restoration of internet services. The indefinite strike enters its 71st day today. And now except families, pharmacies, all the other shops, business establishments as well as educational institutions remain closed. Let's get you some international news. A day after U.S. President Donald Trump asked Islamabad to stop providing safe havens to terrorists, Pakistani Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa has responded by saying that Washington must trust and treat it with respect. General Bajwa met U.S. Ambassador David Hale at the Park Army's headquarters in Rawalpindi, where he was briefed on the U.S.'s new South Asia policy announced by President Trump. At the meeting, General Bajwa told the U.S. envoy that Pakistan was not looking for any financial assistance from the United States and that the U.S. must understand and acknowledge its contributions in Afghanistan. It is noteworthy that while announcing America's new Afghanistan and South Asia policy, Donald Trump had hit out at Pakistan for offering sanctuaries to agents of chaos. The new U.S. policy calls for greater American troop deployment and Indian involvement in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, China has chastised the US after Washington imposed new North Korea related sanctions. Now, the sanctions imposed by the US target Chinese and Russian firms and individuals for supporting Pyongyang's weapons programs. China reacted with irritation, saying that Washington should immediately stop its mistake of imposing unilateral sanctions to avoid damaging bilateral cooperation. This came after U.S. Treasury Des Department designated six Chinese-owned entities, one Russian, one North Korean, and two based in Singapore. The sanctions also targeted uh, six individuals, one of whom is a Chinese. The no move uh, follows a toughened United Nations sanctions agreed this month after North Korea tested its first two intercontinental ballistic missiles in July. At least 41 people have been killed and 13 others were injured in airstrikes that hit a small hotel at Yemen's capital, Sana'a. This comes amid a standoff between the two main components of the rebel alliance, Shiite fighters and loyalists of ousted President Ali Abdullah Saleh. The death toll is likely to rise further. The Saudi-led coalition is waging an extensive air campaign against the Houthis and forces loyal to Saleh. The conflict has killed over 10,000 civilians and displaced 3 million people in the country. And let's get you some more international news now. Here is the World Wrap. A rock concert in Rotterdam in Spain was uh, cancelled on Wednesday after a tip-off from the police. Just hours after the cancellation, a van containing gas uh, canisters was uh, discovered near the venue. The driver of the van was detained by the police. U.S. Uh, band uh, Ala Las had been uh, due to perform at uh, the at the concert hall but the warning had led to the gig being called off at the last minute however it was not clear if the van and the terror threat were linked
U.S. President Donald Trump's uh, threat to shut down the government uh, to secure funding for a wall along the Mexican border rattled markets on Wednesday. U.S. stocks and the dollar weakened. Remember, Trump had uh, made building a border wall uh, to deter illegal immigration a central part of his 2016 election campaign. But the issue of funding the Mexico wall has not gained traction by the lawmakers, including many of the president's fellow Republicans. They question whether the wall is necessary. Typhoon Hato has left five people dead in Macau as it brought chaos and destruction to the enclave after sweeping through neighboring Hong Kong, where one man also died. Severe flooding had left cars uh, underwater and people swimming in Macau's city streets, with the territory's uh, mega casinos running on backup generators. Hurricane winds and uh, heavy rains had earlier hit Hong Kong, leaving an 83-year-old man dead after he fell into the sea and more than 120 others injured. A suicide bomber targeting Afghan policemen and soldiers collecting their pay killed at least seven people and wounded more than 40 on Wednesday. The suicide attacker with a car bomb struck in uh, Lashkriga, which is the capital of uh, southern province of Helmand. Taliban claimed responsibility. Meanwhile, Afghan President uh, Mohammad uh, Ashraf Ghani has uh, called upon the Taliban militants to join the country's peace process. Now to sports now, India will take on Sri Lanka in the second one-day international at uh, Palakkal in Sri Lanka today. India lead the five-match series 1-0 after beating uh, the host by nine wickets in the first encounter played at Dambula this Sunday. Sri Lanka need to win two ODIs in the series to make sure they gain automatic qualification for the 2019 ODI World Cup before the 30th of September deadline. Earlier, India had outplayed the host 3-0 in the long-sided uh, three test series. The match will begin at 2.30 p.m. It was a case of playing two left armers together. Um, that led us to not play Kuldeep in the first game. Aksar, as I said, um, was uh, favoured more than Kuldeep just from the point of view that he bats quite well and, and he's gone in the field also. And, uh, you know, so... I mean, Kuldeep has got opportunities in the past. Chahal and Aksar are guys who haven't got many opportunities, so you want to test them out also. Uh, Kuldeep has played the last test as well. So it's all about giving opportunities to people uh, which we feel will not, um, you know, hamper our plans in any way. Very, very focused on the process. We have uh, policies and procedures in place which will stand us in good stead into the future. Um, that future will take time, as we have stated before. Um, we certainly can't wave any magic wands around. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in a position at the moment that um, England, India, Australia have all found themselves in. Um, we certainly have learned from them and spoken to them. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're very, very confident about how we're going about our work. Um, and then, um, as of tomorrow, uh, we just come on and keep on fighting. Good news uh, from the world of badminton. In Inshatla, Saina Nehwal, Kedambi Shrikant and uh, B. Sai Praneet have entered the pre-quarter finals in the singles event of the World Badminton Championships being placed in Glasgow. Saina beat uh, Sabrina Jakwitz of uh, Switzerland in the straight games, 21-11, uh, 21-12. She will now take on second seed uh, Sungji Hyung. Sai Praneet uh, overcame Anthony Ginting of Indonesia in three games. He will now face either Germany's uh, Marcus Will Blair or a Chinese Taipei's uh, Chao Tian Chen. While uh, Shrikan tumbled uh, France's uh, Lucas uh, Corby 21-9, 21-17. He will now take on uh, 14 seed Anders Antonsen of Denmark. That's it from me and my team in this edition of News. Thanks for watching.